Behind me is the Apodiki Harbour Development Project. The objective of the project is to service a 4,000 hectare mussel farm which is located eight kilometres offshore. As part of the project, we're going to be building two new river training walls, each about 450 metres long. We're going to redirect the Waiweka River between the two training walls and then get a dredge between those two training walls to provide a navigable harbour entrance. Between the training walls, the river in a 100 year flood is going to pump out about 2,000 cubics. During a large storm event, there's going to be some pretty massive waves hitting the head of the training wall and underneath our feet we've got some pretty loose sands which are liquefiable in an earthquake. So the concept design is based on two breakwaters which are angled slightly to the west to account for the current river morphology and to reduce wave propagation down the channel. The walls are approximately 450 metres long and they use handbars as the preferred armour unit uh, based on ease of placement and the availability of rock being limited. Physical modelling was carried out at the Water Research Laboratory in New South Wales. This looked at sections of the structure to look at armour stability, it looked at a quasi 3D head and it looked at a full scale model to determine the stability factors for the units. Based on this, we were able to optimise that both the number and size of handbars, which range from two tonnes at the landward end up to 15 tonnes at the head of the breakwater. Initial analysis of the wave climate and coastal processes showed that the wave heights at the proposed ends of the structures could be in excess of four metres. We were also looking at sediment transport rates which could exceed 100,000 metres cubed in an individual year. Construction on site started in late 2020 with the delivery of armour rock and the pouring of handbar units that will be used to armour the breakwaters. A precast yard has been set up on site in order to pour the 11,000 handbar units, ranging in size from 2 tonne to 15 tonnes. Throughout 2021, HEB have pushed out the twin breakwaters out into the surf zone. Dynamic compaction is used to densify the liquefiable sands beneath the breakwater. 1,400 sheet piles are also installed at the toes of the breakwaters in order to prevent lateral spreading during a seismic event. The breakwaters will be continued to be pushed out to their full length throughout 2022, with dredging activities due to be completed at the end of 2023. Following this, the existing river mouth will be closed with the dredged material, and the new river mouth will be open to allow vessels to navigate the new channel. The scale, the size, the environment, and just the numerous design aspects involved in this project is really challenging and quite complex in terms of the challenges we've had to overcome not only in design but also during construction. It's a pretty exposed environment with wind, waves and a whole bunch of other factors at play. Our designers need to take all these factors into account in their design so that this project and these training walls will still be here for generations to come.